We will now stand together as we sing number 195, our opening hymn, Showers of Blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Precious reviving again Over the hills and the valleys Sound of abundance of rain Showers of blessing Showers of blessing we need Mercy drops round us are falling for the showers we bleed. There shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Showers blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need, mercy drops round us are falling, but for showers we plead. Amen. Happy Sabbath, brethren. It's now time to collect the day's offering. Will the deacons please come forward? Let us pray. Kind Father and our God, we are indeed thankful for the privilege that we can be in your courts once more. As we are about to collect the day offering, we pray that you will bless it. Bless those who have to give and bless those who do not have to give. And may it be used to finish your work and to bring souls to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Tatinia was a physics and astronomy professor who was convicted that God doesn't exist. Then her brother became a Christian and tried to convince her to give God a chance, but she refused to listen. He mailed her Bible studies and literature, but she refused to open the envelopes. One day, Tatina decided to read what her brother had sent 
so she could show him the errors of his belief. She opened several envelopes and read through the lessons. They arose her interest, so she filled in the study sheet. She found herself looking forward to receive each lesson. She began reading the Bible and visited the Little Adventist Church in her city. For the first time in her life, Tatina experienced the presence of God. She and her brother talked about her experience, and the two prayed together. Stubborn Tatina realized she had fallen in love with Jesus. A praying brother and a literature provided by the Adventist Church had helped Tatina find Jesus. Imagine what God can do with your offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Will you please stand and prove me now here it said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Happy Sabbath church. Today we are here privileged to be in the house of God. I am now asking the person who are persons who should be doing this selection, a special selection, can make your appearance. We know that music plays a very important part in our worship. So therefore allow yourself to be assimilated by the presence of the Holy Spirit as the person or persons responsible for this special come forward. Thank you. Why should I be discouraged? Why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely? And long for heaven at home. When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. And I 
of a church. Children are a blessing to us and a blessing to others. It is now time for the children's teachers. We'll sing Let the Little Children Come as the children come forward for their story. Our story for today is about a fruit. Do you like fruits, boys and girls? What's your favorite fruit? Anybody else want to share? You have to tell me your? No? All right, well, my favorite fruit is pineapple. Grape. Grape, yes, I like grapes too. Okay, so. Banana. Nice. So the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, about a fruit. And it is called the fruit of the Spirit. Right. So the fruit of the Spirit is love. So God wants us to love everyone around us, to love our family members, our friends at school, and to show them love. The second, joy. God wants us to be happy all the time, and we can only find the true happiness in him. We have peace. God wants us to make peace with everyone around us, even when they do us wrong. And he wants us to also be patient with others. He wants us to be kind. So when we're at school, we're supposed to share with our friends. And when we're, when we're at home, we should also be kind. And wherever we are, he wants us to be good to each other and to be faithful to him and to be faithful to those around us. The last two are gentleness and self-control. So God wants us to be meek, to be humble, not to be rough and boisterous and, you know, curse everybody. God wants us to be humble just as him and to be able to control ourselves and to behave good. So these are all good characteristics that the Spirit of God wants to give to us. God wants us to be good and to have the fruit of the Spirit in us. And it's hard to do it on our own. In order to be able to have the fruit of the Spirit, we need the Spirit to help us to develop these characteristics. So if you want the fruit of the Spirit, if you want to be loving, if you want to be peaceful and patient and good and kind, you should ask, the, ask God for help so that he can live in you. And the more he lives in you, the more of this fruit you will have. Amen, children? So we're going to clasp our hands and close our eyes, and I'm going to do a short prayer for us. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this blessed Sabbath day and for the children present here. We pray that your spirit will help us to have these characteristics that you want us to have. And may we be kind and loving and good to those around us, and especially to you. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. So we are going to stay where we are. All right, you can go back to your seat. Good morning, church. We have a number of babies to be dedicated to the Lord. As soon as the names of the babies are called, I'm going to invite the parents to come forward with the child or children. We have Amar Ryan Beal, the mother Shantina Donegan. Will you come forward? Then we have
Trey Malik Dwayne Edwards, Mother Krista Joy Lee Winter Edwards, Father Tarrell Dwayne Edwards. We have Javina Camelia Olivia All, Mother Marion All, Father Kevin All. Then we have Kavan Romel Brown Jr., Mother Jillian Gentles Brown, Father Kevin Brown. There might be others that we are not aware of. If you are here, we invite you to come at this time. Elder Aon Warren will be leading out in the act of dedicating these little ones to God at this time. Thank you. Bringing children into this world is a joy, it's a privilege, and it brings happiness. It also brings with it great responsibilities. To become parents, it is a great job to bring up children into this world of sin. And today I am really impressed to see four babies, four young ones coming to be dedicated to the Lord. I'm also impressed to see that the fathers are here. Yes. Not all, and grandparents, grandfather, grandmother, grandparents are here. That is significant because children come into this world through what? Grandparents coming down the line through parents. So that says something of significance. It is no easy job to bring up children into this world. We have to be taught of God the way to train them up. And the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Sometimes when you train them, they seem to go astray, but they'll come back when we teach them the way of the Lord. So today, parents, mothers, and fathers, I am encouraging you to play your part in training these children. Remember also that the first few years of a child's life, and they say the first five years, are very significant. What they learn now, they won't forget. And if you think back into your childhood days, you remember some things when, when you were very young. So teach them the way of the Lord. They are already at school, you know that. Because home is the first school. So whatever you teach them now, it is not just for now, but it will determine their eternity. So may God bless you as you pledge to dedicate, to bring these children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And I would like to say after me, when I'm finished, say, we will. Is it your intention to train these children in the way of the Lord that when they are old, by God's grace, they will not depart from it? God bless you. And it is said that children are taught
out, not only at home, but in the society and in the church. So as a church, church members, it is your intention also to help to train these children in the way of the Lord. God bless you. And I'd like to read for you one passage of scripture. A very well-known text, St. Matthew 19, verse 13 to 15, it says, Then were brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray, and the, the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed hence. Let us now bow our heads as we pray. Kind, loving, and compassionate Father, giver of all good gifts, giver of life, today we come to praise your name for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us as children of men. We thank you, Lord, for another beautiful Holy Sabbath day. We thank you that we can come together as a people to worship you. At this moment, we come now to dedicate these young ones to you. We ask, Lord, that you will bless them, each one of them. We pray that you will touch them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, that you will put a mark upon them that the devil will stand far from them. We ask you, Lord, to touch their brain cells, that as they learn day after day, and as they go to school, they will learn their lessons well. We pray that they learn not only of the things of this world, but they'll learn of Jesus and his love. We pray that as they go to school, and as they go through this world, the diseases that attend children time after time will not come near them. We pray that you'll send your guardian angels each day and each night to protect them from the evils of this world. We ask you, Lord, to bless these children in a special way. Bless their parents also, that they'll always have enough to provide for them. Bless their grandparents and their, all their family members. Bless the homes in which they'll be brought up. We ask, Lord, that the devil will stand far from these homes and that by day and by night, they will be protected. We ask the Heavenly Father to help these children to be like Jesus, that they'll grow up in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man, that they'll become useful citizens, citizens who will bless their communities, and also when you shall come, they'll be ready to meet you in your kingdom. And now, Heavenly Father, we dedicate them to you in the name of Jesus. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. And the parents, remember, next Sabbath, they're going to come back to go to Sabbath school. All right? All right. Oh, I'm told there will be an item, a song. So let us remain for that item.
it's time for a scriptural meditation. Our scriptural meditation comes to us from the book of Numbers, chapter 6, reading from verses 22 to 26. I'll ask you to stand. That's Numbers, chapter 6, from verses 22 to 26. All able-bodied persons, as I'm asking you to stand, You will follow whilst I read. And I begin. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall be blessed the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. 26 and last. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Here ended the reading of the portion of God's holy word. Good afternoon, saints. Today is designated as Women's Emphasis Day. As a result of that, I was told during the course of this week to pray a special prayer on behalf of our women. So I'm going to ask at this time all our women that are able to come to the front, please come to the front. You know that we really need to be empowered by God knowing our responsibilities as women. So as we state the meditation song again, Come ye disconsolate, I ask that all of the women of the church press forward. Come to the front, please. Come ye disconsolate, those to come closer so that other women that are still standing down there to come forward. Brethren, we know our responsibilities as women. It's not an easy task. Those of us who are mothers, grandmothers, whatever our position might be, it's not easy. And as I pray on your behalf this afternoon, I hope and trust that the Holy Spirit will manifest himself in our midst so that each heart will be in harmony with God and each heart will be touched and will be blessed. Hurt as no sorrow that heaven can. 
cannot hear. With your eyes closed and your heads bowed, let us pray. Great God of Israel, the giver and the sustainer of life, the one who created all things, inanimate and animate. Today we stand in your house, dear God, in your presence. It's not because of any good of ours why we stand here this more afternoon, but because of your tender love and mercy to us all. We are so grateful for this moment where we can come in the presence of God knowing that there is fullness of joy. God, as I pray on behalf of our woman today, you know I am not worthy. Like Paul, each time I want to do good, he will present itself. But I pray right now, mighty God of Israel, that you will cleanse me inside out. Remove, sister right, everything inside of me that is unlike you and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Pray through me, Holy Spirit, and let each and every one in the hearing of my voice be blessed. And we'll all cry out and say, thank God we are free at last. Oh God, I thank you for your cleansing. Because I still believe that there is a fountain that fills with blood. And when sinners plunge beneath, we lose all our guilty stains. And so this moment, oh God, I'm going to pause in lifting you up. I'm going to praise you this more afternoon because you're worthy. I lift I the name of Jesus. You are awesome. You're a mighty God in this place. You are I and lifted up mighty God. We praise you. We magnify your name. We worship you. With art of humility, we bow before you. Truly, you are God and God alone. Holy Spirit, fill this place right now. Take over, dear God. Come descend in our midst and let your people feel your presence and feel your touch right now, Jesus. Oh God, we want to give you thanks for being the God you have been unto us. You have been so good to us. Oh yes, you have opened doors for us that we are able to see what a mighty God we serve. We thank you for your protection throughout the week that has been vivid in our lives. You have protected us from known and, unevil, and unknown evil. We want to give you thanks this morning. We thank you for your ministering angels that minister unto us daily. We give you thanks, O oh God, for them. And so, O oh God, our greatest thanks this afternoon is for Jesus Christ, who make it possible for us through his precious blood and Calvary, that though our sins be as scarlet, hallelujah, they can be made as white as snow, that you forgive our sins and you remember them no more. And so right now, Jesus, as we stand as women, Oh God, our responsibility is so heavy, but it's, but it's awesome. May we realize, oh God, that when you took from Adam's rib and you formed that woman, it wasn't coincident. You did it in a specific way for a special reason. We know our responsibility, oh God, is heavy. And of ourselves, we cannot execute it. But oh God, as women this afternoon, we fall prostrate at your feet. We have confused so many times our young people and even our community people. Sometimes we live contrary lives that they are not able to see Jesus through us. But today we repent, oh God. We pray that you'll forgive us of our many sins. Have mercy upon us, Jesus. And pardon and forgive us. Blot out our transgressions. And wash us so that we can be made as white as snow. Lord Jesus, we long to be perfectly whole. We want you to live in our soul. Break down every idol. Cast out every foe, Jesus. Wash us right now and make us whiter than snow. 
I invite your spirit right now, Holy One of Israel, that your Holy Spirit will move amongst the, young, the ladies and the women who stand in the, in, in the front right now. I pray that as you move around and as their faces differ, so are their needs, that you will minister unto them right now, Jesus, whatever their needs might be, be it marital need, intervene, O oh God, and bring about changes be it financial, whatever it might be, oh God, may they leave from your house rejoicing because they come in contact with Jesus and they have never been the same they used to be. Help us, oh God, to realize our awesome responsibility. You are counting on us to have a purpose and to let it known that wherever we go, others can see Jesus through us. Our deportment will tell us that we are in, have been come, come in contact with Jesus. Then, oh God, we pray for our men. They are also important, O oh God, as they stand beside the ladies and the women of the church. We pray that you will empower them, Holy Spirit, that they will be ordinary men. There will, be, there will not be ordinary men, but they will be extraordinary men. Men that have been empowered with your Holy Spirit. Men that will stand in their gap and call sins by its name. Men, oh God, will live a life of example so that young people of the church and other young people around can look up to them and call them blessed. Men, oh God, would that will love their wives, love their children, love their spouses and will be the men that you are counting on them to be. Father God, we thank you to know that you are a prayer answer God and you said whatever we ask in your name it shall be given unto us I pray Lord for the, the speaker of the hour sister Taylor hide her behind the cross may not she be seen but may Jesus be seen and as she delivered, thus said the Lord, may she deliver with clarity. May when she speak your word, O oh God, your people will respond immediately. And they will say, we hear you, Lord. And it's our desire to walk in your precepts. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. Whatever we fail to ask Jesus, fail not to grant it. But in closing, we as your people, your believing people, we are anticipating that day when the clouds will be rolled back like a scroll. And the Son of God will come forth, not as a baby in a manger, not as a crucified Lord, but as King of kings and Lord of lords. What a day is going to be, Jesus. What a day of rejoicing when we shall see you in your splendor. Lord, we are anticipating that day. May none of us who stand in your presence today be missing from that number. But may we be privileged to go with you and to reign with you and live with you forever and ever. We pray in your precious name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
The privilege is mine to introduce the speaker for today. Her name is Mistress Karen Brown Taylor. She's an elder of the Wayne Road SDA Church, a mother and a teacher. She loves to witness and loves to preach, and she loves children. Before she comes, we'll have the song of meditation by the choir.
Good afternoon, Port Antonio. I bring you greetings from the Wayne Road Seventh Day Adventist Church. Today is a very special day in Zion. Because as women, we celebrate with Jesus. Because we, we serve a wonderful God. We serve a mighty God. Praise the Lord, Port Antonio. Lift your hands and give God a praise. He is wonderful. He is mighty. He is worthy to be praised. Make me a blessing. I want to express gratitude for the two songs that were rendered. Why should I be discouraged? Because indeed we live in a day and age when not just women, but men and women, children, are becoming discouraged. Make me a blessing, the choir song. And today I want to speak to you for a few minutes on the topic, blessed to be a blessing. Let us pray. Loving Lord Jesus. I place myself entirely into your hands. A little lump of clay that is willing to be used by you. I pray, divine God, that as you mold me and make me and fashion me, I pray that you will make me a blessing. I pray that the words that I will speak will bless the heart of the heirs today. In Jesus name blessed to be a blessing there are many challenges that women face in life today and as we go closer and closer towards the coming of Jesus the calamities upon women are increasing as women we face rape we face abandonment we face divorce, disappointment, domestic violence, trafficking in our country or internationally, stalking and harassment are most of the common type of abuse today. Women's legal and reproductive rights are undermined. Women are objects of shame and scandal, even on social media. There are many attempts to diminish our power and silence our voices. We suffer so many things in life, but there are stories of women who have been bold in the Bible, stories about women that over the years we have studied and we have, we have tried to live like the characters in the Bible because indeed there were women of worth, women of grace, women of strength and power. And as women serving Jesus, 
we are indeed women of strength and power. So throughout the centuries, nameless women have faced great challenges. But despite the ordeals that women faces, many women have emerged a blessing. And as women, we are here this morning because we are in fact a blessing. What a blessing. What do you say? And so today we look at two women from the Bible, Mary and the Shunammite woman. And so the scripture in Luke chapter 1, verse 28 and 29, you follow in your Bibles quickly. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at the saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. So Mary, as we know her from the scriptures, she was a young peasant. She was nothing great in the eyes of men. Because she was poor, I would imagine that she may not have been the crowd's favorite. She was probably looked about as a nobody because she was a, pe a peasant. She was not the cover girl on the front page of a magazine. Her name may not ring a bell in her community. Maybe she never had brand name clothes. Maybe she never had, well, I know she never had a Samsung phone and some of the things that as women we pride today. But I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that Mary had one thing that we aspire to be. She was a peculiar woman. She had Christ-like humility. She was never visited by government officials in those days. But she had a peculiar visitor. The Bible says that the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. This morning I stand here to tell you women of Port Antonio that the Lord bless you. The Lord be with you in spite of everything that is happening. You are blessed and you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You know, from the scripture, the Bible says that Mary was perplexed. And, and, and so she, the, verse 29, and when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying. I guess probably she never understood why is it that at this time I am getting such a visit. But the Lord was with Mary. This was beyond Mary's wildest imagination because she was engaged to a carpenter, not a prime minister. She was engaged to a carpenter. She was a little peasant girl engaged to a carpenter, but she was visited by an angel. May I remind some young lady this morning that one day you are going to be visited if you are faithful, if you live clean. The angel of the Lord will visit you and bless you and rise you up and give you a name among women. Yes, she was humble. She was obedient to God in faith and she did not understand but Mary, a poor girl, was willing to be used by faith. And she was willing not just by faith, but to give her body to be used. And because of that, you and I today are praising God. Because Mary was the mother of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, my brothers and sisters, Mary's humility brought her blessing and it is bringing us blessing today. What do you say? Yes. God has great expectations for us. Praise God. Just like Mary, 
God is willing to use us to bring a blessing to others. And so we hop over to the Old Testament scriptures. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 to 11, I want you to follow with me in your Bibles quickly. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 to 11. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shuman, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. And let us set for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it be, and it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And I want you to hold the scripture there. The Bible says that Elisha passed by Shuman. Now I want you to understand that Shuman is the modern Solom of the southwestern slope of the Little Herman, in full view of Mount Carmel. This place, Shuman, was found in the midst of the finest cornfield in Palestine. And if you go to Joshua 19, verse 8, you will read a little about that. But as we read in the scripture, it was customary for Elisha to pass by Shuman. Elisha met a woman that is only known as the Shunammite woman. From the scripture, we learn something about her, that she was a wealthy woman. So the woman urged Elisha to stay, and this was common in accordance with oriental hospitality. She took pride in showing kindness to the prophet. Now, I guess that this Shunammite woman must have seen something different in the man of God. And as a result of that, she engaged her husband, which of course, ladies, we know, it's a good habit to engage our spouse. And, and so the Shunammite woman engaged her husband. I know this man who often come is a man of God, she says. Let us be hospitable to him. Let us make a small room in the wall or on the roof of the house, as some version renders this text. We are going to put furniture into it, a bed, a table, a chair, a lamp, so that where, and whenever he come, he can stay there. Woman, I am telling you this morning that the Shunammite woman was setting up herself for a blessing. She was setting up herself for a blessing. What the Shunammite woman was doing is missionary work. And as women, we are a part of this work. We must do whatever we can for Jesus. Maybe she wasn't a preacher. Maybe she, she, she would not have gone on a pulpit, but she did whatever she could. And that's an example that she was setting. And so the story unfolds that one day Elisha came back, verses 12 to verse 17. You can read in the scriptures. One day Elisha came, and she went to the, he went to the room, and he lay down, and he called his servant Gezai, and he said, call the Shunammite. So Gezai went, and he called her, and she came, and she stood before Elisha. Elisha said to the Shunammite woman, you have done a lot for me. What can I do for you? Come on, brothers and sisters. Blessings were on the way for this woman. You have done a lot for me. 
What can I do for you today? Can I speak on your behalf to the king commander of the army? You see, my friends, the kindness of the Shunammite was not gone unnoticed with God. But there was a little problem. The Shunammite woman had a long desire in her heart, and God wanted to fulfill that desire. She had longed for a child, but like many other childless women, I guess probably she had given up the start because the Bible says that her husband was old. And so she gradually grew comfortable in her present condition. If you look at verse 13, you will look at how, how the woman answered the servant of God. Let's look at verse 13 of the same scripture. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. Verse 14. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Geza answered, Verily she had no child, and her husband is old. She felt secure and content in the community where she lived. She felt secure and content in her family. She thought that she had no need for any favor from the government officials. But I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that she probably thought that. But because she was a good woman, it was time for God's blessings. We also see from the scripture that her husband was old. Like many of us today, we look at our limitations. Many times we are called to do something and all we see is our, limit, our limitations. When the Lord is ready to help to bless us and to help us, we see impossibilities. Sometimes as women, I blame us because we wallow in self-pity instead of trusting God. But this morning, I want to remind us that we can be blessed to be a blessing if we trust God. God wants us to put our explicit trust in him. But sometimes instead of putting our explicit trust in God, we trust in some empty promises. We trust to place our trust in false hopes. But I want to remind us that when our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness, we can't help ourselves but to trust him. Yes. And so the woman was about to receive her blessing. And so Elisha told her that she was going to conceive and to bear a son. Praise God. About this season, Elisha says, according to the time of life, verse 16, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine unmade. I guess probably she was shocked. And she was saying, listen to me now, Elisha. Tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. I am childless. I want to bear fruit. My husband is old. Elisha, speak the truth to me. But she was about to receive the blessing of Almighty God. And the scripture says that the same time, that means nine months after, in the following year, the woman's womb was blessed. And she gave birth to a son. And so the first Corinthians 2 verse 9, one of my favorite texts, but it is written, I had not seen nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God had prepared for them that love him. So I want to remind us both men and women that when we love Jesus, he will retold nothing at all from us. It doesn't matter how impossible it seems in the eyes of men. 
it is possible in the eyes of God. He is a great God. Yes. Praise God. But you know, ladies, you see, sometimes I, I have a little problem because it happens to me too. The problem is that we love our comfort zone too much. Hey, come on. If you want to be blessed, to be a blessing woman, I charge you this morning to stay out of your comfort zone. Replace your comfort zone with faith in Jesus Christ. God will take us places where he challenges our faith. You ask me how I know that. The same story that we talk about, the Shunammite woman. Remember, she was childless, but she had faith in God. Her husband was old. That's another impossibility. But God blessed her nonetheless with a son. But <laughs> there are many times that we are blessed and we lose the blessing. Come on. But when we lose the blessing, sometimes we give up. But we have lost that blessing because God has something better in store for us. And sometimes we probably thought that the blessing would have been permanent. But some things are temporary. And we'll talk about that in a little while. And so we serve a mighty God. What do you say? We serve a God of miracles. What do you say? The Shunammite's faith was challenged, but she never gave up. She did not give up because she knew that the God that she served was a deliverer. She did not give up because she knew that he was an untime God. What do you say? He may not come just in time when we need him, but as the song says, he'll be there right on time because he's an untime God. So the Bible says, as I hasten, that the son grew and was helping the father in the field and Bam's calamity struck. In verse 19 to 20, the Bible says that the boy had an headache and the Shunammite woman places the boy on her lap and the Bible says the boy died. Amen. Jesus. Hey. So she was set up to be blessed, but she lost the blessing. But as I tell you before, that this was just temporary. Sometimes we lose what we have because God wants to give us a testimony. What do you say? So I can imagine that the death news spread quickly. Come on with me as I hasten. I can imagine that, that, you know, it was the universal opinion of the Jews that calamities were the effect of sin. John 9 verse 2, when we read that scripture. So in those days, it was the universal opinion that if you serve the Lord and something bad happened to you, it is because you have sinned. I can imagine that there were many rumors about the Shunammite woman as people learn about the death of her son. Come now with me, women. There are many times when we suffer because of the rumor mill, but this woman was not about to give up because she served a great God. People may have said negative things about her, but she kept hope alive because she knew the God that she served. A woman who knows God is not a coward. If you are a woman this morning and you are fearful and you are a coward, you need to go back on your knees. A woman who served God is not a coward. A woman who serves God cannot afford to be an ordinary woman. Come on with me, ladies. If we serve God as women, men alike, if we serve God, we are not ordinary. We are not ordinary women. Verse 21, follow in your Bibles. She did not call the funeral parlor. Hey, here, come on with me, women. Come on, men and children. The woman was careful not to call the funeral parlor. 
it was customary to bury the dead within 24 hours, but she did not make a funeral arrangement because as a woman of God, she knew that the boy was dead temporarily. Praise the Lord Almighty God. So you can imagine. Now, now look at this woman. You see, sometimes when, when we are being set up for a blessing, you know, sometimes we don't even understand this. When the woman was preparing the bed for Elisha, she did not understand that the same bed that her hands carefully spread was the bed that would bring her a blessing. And so the Bible says that when she found out that the child was dead, she took this, the dead boy. And where did she put him? Verse 28. She put him in the bed of the man of God and she took off to find Elisha. Hey, come on, brothers and sisters. Why did she put the dead boy in the bed of Elisha? Because she knew, she found out that there was something special about Elisha. Maybe the Holy Spirit spoke to her when she was making the bed and healing was supposed to be in that bed. God set up the Shunammite for a blessing. Woman of Port Antonio, when God is setting you up for a blessing, everything in your house is not going to be ordinary, but you must not trust. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You must not give up. You must trust God. A troubled marriage may be temporary. Come on, brothers and sisters. The battle we fight as women with our wayward children may be temporary if we trust God. The poor financial state that we are in may be temporary if we trust God. The loss of the Shunammite son was temporary. The problems that we are going through this morning may be temporary. Come on. I declare the problems that we face as women temporary because we serve a great God. Come on, my brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter what the enemy throw at you. Declare them temporary. Come on. Because we serve a God who is able to take our temporary situations and turn them out in a blessing. The nights might be sleepless. The tears may be flowing. The pillows may be wet. Men, you can't understand this. But there is something peculiar about a woman who organizes with God. Come on, women, I want you to understand that we must love God. We must trust him. We must praise him. We must serve him. He is a good God. He is a wonderful God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Hey, sometimes as women, our start in life may be rocky. Come on. Sometimes you don't know the beginning from the end. But I want to tell you that we serve a God of miracles. We serve a great God. He's the God of the Shunammite woman. Come on. He's the God of Mary. And he's your God. And he's my God. And we must trust him. You know, there's, there's a part that, 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 that is so sweet. That is so wonderful. Go to the text. Second Kings chapter 4. And I want us to look at something from verse 31. And Gezai passed on before them. And laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Because remember we said the child was what? Dead. Wherefore he went again to meet him. And told him saying. The child is not awake. But we know that don't we? And when Elisha was coming to the house. Behold the child was dead. And laid upon the bed. He went therefore and shut the door upon them twain, and he did what? 
And he did what? And he did what? He prayed. Because there is power in prayer. What do you say? There is deliverance in prayer. And so Elisha prayed. And this is the sweetest part that I like. Verse 34. And he went up and lay upon the child. Come on. And, and he put his, his mouth upon the mouth and his eyes upon the eyes and his hands upon the hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child walks warm. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us... <laughs> In order for our flesh to be wax warm, we have to go back to God. Come on. Mouth upon mouth. Eyes upon eyes. Hands upon hands. We have to spread ourselves before God so that the God healing Jesus can bring back life to the body. But as the drama unfolds, you see, brothers and sisters, I love the scripture. It is sweeter than the soap opera. It is nice. It is sweet. Verse 35. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro. Come on. He, he was pacing the floor. <laughs> there, there are times when we have to do that, not you. <laughs> and went up and stretched himself upon the child. And the child did not sneeze one time. But the child sneezed how many times? Seven times. Perfection. When the God that I serve lay hand on a woman in distress, she will not just sneeze one time, but seven times. Hallelujah to Jesus. Perfect. Seven. Perfection. That's the kind of God that we serve. What do you say? Perfect number. Seven. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love God. I love the word of God. So my brothers and my sisters, women who are here in this morning, you are listening to my voice. Whatever your situation God is ready to bless you. What do you say? You may feel like everything in your life is dead. But I told you before that death is not permanent. Come on. Death is not permanent. And even if we die and we are buried, death is not permanent. Because Mary's womb Bring forth the dream that there is going to be a resurrection. What do you say? A woman's womb bring blessing so that you and I can be here worshiping today. Almighty God, I ask you this morning, woman, to give your circumstances to God. Turn over everything to Jesus. Turn your problems to Jesus. He is the problem solver. No, oh, how is it that the Shunammite woman was blessed to be a blessing as I is now? She was blessed to be a blessing, brothers and sisters, because she knew what it is to serve God. What do you say? When you serve God, you are not a, come on, you are not an ordinary woman. So I can imagine no women that the Shunammite woman who never had a child and her husband was old. She was rich, but she had limitation. She can now give a testimony. Come on. Hey, I was barren. My husband was old, so expectations of childbearing was kind of limited. And God gave me a son, and he died, and he was resurrected, and he's alive, and I am a blessing. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. I told you, women, that sometimes we lose some things, eh? and we cry over them. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Another time, I'll tell you some more about that. I can't tell you everything today. 
if you invite me back another time, I'll tell you. But as a woman, I know what it is like to struggle. I have been there. I have been crushed. I know about crucibles. Come on, women. If you know, if you know what crucibles are, just lift your hands and praise God. Come on. Hey. When the devil turn up the heat on your life and your marriage and your family and your children and your food and your bank account and everything that you have. When the devil turn up the heat, the blessings of the Lord come mightily. Sometimes you don't even understand. Come on, <laughs> women. I am telling you, sometimes God even use your enemy to bless you. Come on. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. You see, <laughs> my experiences in life, Sister Ellis, had taught me that I must not be fearful. Come on. For God, the Bible says, had not given us, come on, repeat the text with me, a spirit of, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So as I close with the Shunammite legacy to us, there are some things that we must remember about the story of the Shunammite. One is a legacy of service and hospitality. Women, be careful to serve. I have a little thing to tell you. That even when things are not going right at home, don't spite anybody. Don't spite no husband, no son, no daughter, nobody at all. Serve with blessings. Come on. Serve with love. Serve to the best of your ability. If your enemy come for something, give them. Don't spite anybody. The devil may want to want us to be spiteful and art and did. And sometimes, you know, women, I don't want the men to listen to this. But sometimes when the men hurt us, you know, and the devil says spite them. The Lord says love them. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the Lord says love them in spite of what do you say? Yes. Come on. Don't worry about it. You see, sometimes the earth is so deep, but the love of God is sweeter. What do you say? Second is a legacy of contentment. Women of Port Antonio, I advise us this morning to be content with what we have. Don't look at what nobody has. Don't be ready and grudgeful and look at where your neighbor and your sibima and you can't find... Listen to me. You may not be able to afford Bima. You may not even have a hand card. But I want to tell you that when you trust God, you walk on streets of gold. Hey. Come on. Woman, I want to tell you. The third legacy is the legacy of peace and trust. The best legacy is to trust God. To be at peace. Sometimes it's hard, you know, Sister Ellis, to be at peace. Hey, especially in these troubled times. It is hard, but the Shunammite was at peace with God. And because she was at peace, she was blessed to be a blessing. Come on. The fourth legacy was a legacy of perseverance. Hey, woman, I advise you this afternoon to hold on tenaciously to the God of love. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how deep the enemy stand through the dart or how far hold on tenaciously to God. You don't know what it is like to need it. You take out the flour to make the dumping woman I'm talking to you now. And if you understand what I'm saying, just be quiet and allow the Holy Spirit to speak. You take out the flour to make the dumping. But you remember the son you had who grew up serving Jesus and has gone from the fold. Are you remember the daughter you once loved and nourished and cherished in your heart who is wandering all over the place? You remember the husband that you love. Men, you remember, come on, the wives that you love. And sometimes you realize that the tears are flowing in the floor. You have to throw it away and take out a new set. Come on. Or you have to go to your liquor prior place. Come on, ladies, if you know what I'm talking about, you will understand 
that there are many times when we are distressed and our tears flow. But we must persevere, come on. Yes, the tears will flow, but press on. So like the Shunammite, we have the certainty that nothing that befall us can separate us from the love of God. Praise God. And this morning, women, I want to end as I share our scripture reading, the Arianic benediction. The benediction of Aaron, number 6, 22 to 26, and verse 27. As you look and contemplate at the text, women, I remind you that you are blessed. Praise God. God bless you with a fierce and committed love. When God says, be blessed, women, you are. When God says, be blessed, men, you are. You are blessed in Jesus and the forgiveness that flows from his cross. You have received life forevermore. Your Lord has spoken words of life, good words into your soul. You are blessed because your God is an awesome God, a holy God, a powerful God, a compassionate God. In God, every detail of our life is fitting together to create a tapestry of praise. What do you say? You are blessed, women of Port Antonio, this morning. You are blessed in little ways, in larger ways, in every way. Your Savior causes you to prosper. You are an heir of heaven. Come on, women. No matter what anybody say about you, you are an heir of the throne of God. Hallelujah to Jesus. You are blessed. The unconditional love of the Father is yours. His face always shine on you in love and unconditional acceptance. You did not earn that acceptance by being good. And I remind you, ladies and men likewise, that you cannot lose this blessing by being bad because the grace of God is available. What do you say? God has decided to love you forever. So even if the love you receive on earth is temporary, just remember that there is a loving Jesus, come on, whose love will never grow old. You are blessed. Jesus holds you in his heart. You are his favorite sister, his favorite brother. His love for you brings with it peace beyond anything you can fully understand. Come on. The shalom of the mighty God buoys you up, calms your heart, make it possible for you to trust fully in the strong, sure care of your heavenly Father. You are blessed. Women, you are blessed to be a blessing. The Lord has placed his name upon you. The triune God has claimed you as his very own and given you a new name higher than any other name because that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Jesus is Lord. Women, I remind you this morning as I take my seat that you are blessed to be a blessing and the blessing of God upon you, women and men and children is forever. God bless you.